Hi guys and welcome to Radwolf and Bushcraft. Thanks a lot for tuning in. It is autumn, the colors in the woods are just amazing so I decided to go out for a walk and then I spotted a lot of mushrooms and decided like hey let's go foraging but there's one problem. Where can I put the mushrooms because I didn't take a backpack with me? Well that means crafting time with simple tools like a Swiss army knife and a pair of gloves. Let's get out into the woods and craft a basket made from bramble. I'll show you how it's done. Let's go. If you want to harvest your crafting materials efficiently, let me just show you a little trick. If you look for entire bushes like these, you will find different types of twigs. Like for example here, I have a thick main stem of the plant, which is rather solid and about the, as thick as my pinky as you can see. And those are just perfect for your spokes because they don't bend a lot. But then you will also find those rather thin ones, which should always be about half the size of your spokes, because we want to weave this into the basket later on. And the fresher and the thinner those shoots or um, branches are, the easier it will be to craft your actual basket. So make sure to look for spots like these, then you can find all the resources that you need. So here you see all the material that I collected. I will first clean that up now, show you how that's done. And then I will explain why I collected these branches the way I did. All right, so before we start crafting, we first have to make sure that we remove all the thorns from our bramble pieces. And you can do two things. You can either use your gloves and just brush them off like so, but it will ruin your gloves over time. There's another method that I like to use, which is basically finding a dead tree, like this one right here and then just bringing the branch around like a piece of rope. And then I'll just pull back and forward. And this will remove all the thorns because they will get stuck in that wood. And what's really important is that you turn your bramble pieces so that you get to the bramble piece from every angle, right? And then you remove all the thorns with very little effort. And as you can see, this one is already perfectly fine to work with. I can touch it without my gloves. I don't get stung. So let's get going and have a look at the next step. All right, so here are all the materials that we need for the basket. Let me just bring you close. Right up here, we got seven of those thick branches, which, as I said, need to be about pinky size and sturdy. And then I got three of these thin ones here, which will be used for the actual weaving process. And just a little tip. I always use my body height as a reference for those pieces. So all of these are about 1 meter 80 or 5 foot 6, I guess that is. And it's really important to work with such long pieces because you will see in a second that we will, at a point, need to combine the thinner yeah, branches or shoots with one another. And it's always good to have long working pieces so that you don't have to do all that knotting work and that you get some stability into your basket. But without any further ado, Let's start with the very first step in crafting. So the first thing we need to do is take six of our spokes and form a cross. And let me just show you how this is done. You take three and align them horizontally parallel to one another, right like this. And then you just take the other three and you put those vertically on top, just like so. Then you have to make sure that all these branches are aligned in a parallel direction so that they don't overlap. Takes a moment, especially with the tripod over there, but I think you catch the drift. So, and then we bring these close together that we got this central point right here, because this is going to be the bottom of our basket. The next step is to form a loop with one of the thinner branches, the half pinky sized ones, okay? And it's really important to make sure that the two ends 
are not aligned parallelly. One needs to be longer than the other and why you will see later on because if they are not like evenly trimmed here we can basically weave in another piece here keep working with this and the other way around right so we make our loop right like this and then we bring this loop over one side of those three spokes I'll show you that in a close-up so here is our cross we make sure that we align it properly again you will have to correct this once in a while because yeah as it goes with wild growing plants they just go any direction but yeah we put that back in place just like so and then we take this loop right here and we will put it over those three and bring it in to our center point right like that as you can see this is basically holding that one in place right and then we twist those like so I don't know if you can see this well on camera so the top part goes down and the top part goes up and after the twist we bring through the other three so the top one goes through the bottom and the bottom one goes over the top what we do then is tighten that up you will need to work this all the time and then it should look something like that and then we give it another twist okay bring the top one in underneath and the same thing with the top uh, the bottom one that goes over again and then we continue in two rounds around that center point always make sure to tighten up everything you do here just get that nice and on tension Alright, so after two or three wrappings we will have our basic framework with the bottom of the basket right here and now comes a little trick because we need to get these spokes spread out right so basically like this that we will form a wheel and we use the exact same technique as we use right now with the twist but then we just use one spoke at a time so I'm doing a twist right just like so bring in the closest spoke Tighten that up, give it a turn, bring in the next spoke, give it a turn, pull it tight, bring in the next spoke and as you can see this already starts to spread out, it's basically feathering out into different directions and that's exactly what we want. What you're gonna do, you're just gonna continue with about two to three more wrappings of that I will do this now off camera and then I will get back to you in a second, all right? So now we've reached the point that I was mentioning before. This working end, as you can see, is getting way too short. So in order to continue, we need to make sure that this one is longer than that, right? And then we just bring in another working piece, align that parallelly, as you can see, and just treat this as one string and continue with the twisting that will just lock in place automatically. Again, take the thin end, put it in here and continue with both of them as if they were one. Twisting. Putting the next spoke through. tightening it up twisting again and now I lost this this just happens make sure you bring this back in and just um, tighten it up in one of the wrappings you did earlier it's a tiny tip so if I bring that in like so it will stick in place
so. Again, a wrapping, take the middle one, bring that through. Twist again, just like so. Bring in the third one. All right, so now that we have our base ready like this, we need to bring in the seventh spoke. And why will become apparent in a second. So what we're going to do is we take the additional spoke that we collected, the seventh one, and then we look for a place in the wheel where the spacing between the spokes is the biggest. So that we have an even distribution of spokes. And I would say that the biggest distance is right here, or maybe yeah, right here. That looks better. So I'm taking that spoke, right? And I'll just push it through the weavings from before. You don't really have to work very precisely here. Just make sure that the spoke really sticks inside yeah, those wrappings that you did before. For example, right here we can push it through here again. So now that locks into place and we got an additional spoke right here. We then continue with the same technique that we had before and do another wrapping with a twist per actual spoke. All right? So right here we have the additional spoke and as you can see this is locked in place now due to the two wrappings that we did around there. And now we continue with the next step. We just give this last twist here one more time like that. And then we use both of our working ends, both of these, as one. So we bring this in, twist aligning them parallelly and then bringing it in from behind the next spoke right here. So like this. And then we bring it on top over the next spoke right here and underneath the third one and over the fourth one and so on. And as you might already picture, now this comes in handy, the seventh or the odd number in here in your basket. You can also do a ninth or like a like seventeenth. It's totally up to you. But you need an odd number of spokes because once we go around here, the pattern will invert, as you will see in a second. So over and under. Always make sure to tighten that up for as much as it's possible. Over again under, over, and under, and then over again. Sometimes it takes a bit of patience. So, and again, make sure to pull these in tight so that your spokes come up because in the end this will just form like a bowl shape or yeah, basket shape kind of yeah how do you call it like a cavity in here and then just basically put those spokes up which will make your basket stable so and now you can see this now we're going over the one that we just went under see here it goes under and now 
we go over and under. And we just continue like this up until we got the rough outline of our basket. Always make sure to tighten up your basket like this, just always keep on pressing it down as if you would take a comb for your hair, you know, and you just basically pull that through those spokes. As you can see, I'm already out of material, <laughs> as funny as it might sound. So I'm going to go over to the bramble bush and just get more. <laughs> See you in a sec. As you can see, the basket is taking shape. It might be handy to work upside down so that the spokes just drop down naturally and that you just need to follow them around. I'm gonna finish that up and then we get to the final step, all right? Okay, so what I'm doing right now is shortening the actual spokes. Don't cut too far. Make sure that you leave like a piece of about, yeah, maybe two times the length of your Swiss Army knife or maybe like your lower arm, right? And we do this with every spoke. So this one, I want two. Okay. And I want two. Okay, great. So as you can see, we have our spokes all standing up right now. And I'm just gonna position the camera on the other side to show you how we finish this project. Okay, so let's first bring our spokes back into the position they were. And as you can see, sometimes working ends come loose so make sure you just put them back in before they get out of your weaving so that one goes here that one's supposed to be further up so that one's here okay so what we're going to do is we work the spokes by going from one to the next one, just laying it over and bending it outward. If you can see this. Again, over and outward. Then we take the second one and do the same thing with the third. We go over and then outward. The third one goes to the fourth one. Fourth one to the fifth one. And then it should look somewhat like this. So those were your working ends, right? And again, just in the close-up. So this is our spoke. Over the next one, as you can see right here, and bending it outward. And then working with the second one to the next, outward again and so on. Once we got all the way around to our final spoke right here, we just take this, bend it over the last one right here, and then we just lead it underneath the one that we used in the beginning. 
right here. If you want to secure this twice, no problem. You can go through the next spoke too, just like that. And now all of this holds in place. We can do a bit of correction here, as you can see. And now the final thing we need to do is cut our spokes right here at the ends. I also suggest to always keep a tiny bit looking out of your actual basket so that if it starts moving and, and does a bit of yeah, pushing and pulling it will stay in place. So don't cut it right here where it's led through the last um, yeah, spoke but just give it a bit of leeway. And our final spoke and here we go. Nice little basket. All right, folks, so here's the final result. As you can see, it doesn't particularly win a beauty pageant, but it definitely does what it's supposed to do. It needs to contain mushrooms in my case. If you go out foraging, maybe you want to put in some nuts or some chestnuts or whatever comes to mind, right? And now I'm just going to apply a handle. Um, there's a pretty simple trick to that too. You just take another thin twig from the bramble bush and then you just weave it right in here in the sides right and just wrap it a couple of times and then you got yourself a handle. I'll show you the final result in a second. Okay so to finish the basket I'll just make sure that the end pieces of my handle are soft so I'm just pressing it like so and work it a bit because I want to just use simple overhand knots to tie them up here after I wove them through a couple of times so I make sure that my um, handle is coming out here, right? So I pull it through the other side, give it a twist, come back in through another weaving, just like so. And now I'm going to tie this up just with a simple overhand knot. Maybe you want to make two, it's all up to you. And yeah, as you can see, I can lift my basket now. This is the final result. Not beautiful, but definitely functional. All right, folks, so this is it. A nice and neat little bramble basket that I can use to go forage some mushrooms. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber yet. And yeah, above all, Give this a try yourself and tell me about your experiences. Did you ever craft anything like that? Drop a comment below. Didn't you do it and don't you know where to go? Drop a comment too. Ask me questions. I'm glad to help you out. And yeah, up until the next video, I say happy crafting. Enjoy your days outdoor. And up until then, bye bye. See you in the next video. If you want to support my channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. You can visit my Patreon page on www.patreon.com slash Bushcraft. A link to my Patreon page will also be posted in the information box below. Thank you in advance.